The African Mining Indaba takes place in Cape Town next week, and a parallel conference is also being held to give affected communities and civil society a platform. The 14th Alternative Mining Indaba meets under the theme A Just Energy Transition, Unlocking Community Potential and Participation. Let's discuss this and the state of our minds with mining expert Franz Baleni. A very good morning to you, Franz. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, I was having a, a chat a little earlier on with uh, uh, Hassan Logat, who was talking about how, you know, this is essentially just a looters conference. This is just people in mining, people in government who are just coming together to try and essentially solidify their interests um, and, and, and just essentially put the already disenfranchised communities in mining communities in further anguish. I mean, would you agree that this, this is how it can be looked at or can something positive actually come out of this? I think something positive can come out of this. You know, the theme of um, this 29th mining in Daba is unlocking investment in Africa. Um, it also focuses on supply, security, and stability. I've just made a point in my opening remarks today in the ministerial symposium that we can't have a situation where there's an abundance of minerals and yet we're still talking about poverty, inequality, and unemployment. And therefore, the leaders here, the investors here, uh, workers, trade unions, and everybody has to contribute. How best can we change the unacceptable situation to a situation where everybody can see benefits of mining rather than see it as a curse? Now, how do the communities in, you know, the, the, the way the mines are essentially established, how do they get to see the benefits? Because I want to just, you know, just throw to a Yachersfontein, for example. It's, it's a mine that was affected uh, not so long ago, and, and yet nothing has actually uh, materialized. So we talk about, you know, investment in Africa, which can come through mining, but the communities that are right there where these minerals are being harvested, they are still living in, in you know, destitute conditions. The mining approach has to change. It has to be an inclusive growth. Um, the hosting communities must have a direct benefit. One way um, is infrastructure. Currently, you have a situation where there's electricity, there's water supply to the mine, but the surrounding communities don't benefit out of that infrastructure. And therefore, right from the beginning of first operating mining, it must be in such a manner that it is inclusive. Those forms of benefits, not only employment, but also a stake. You know, some something like your Royal Bafu King, where the community can benefit directly because they get royalty fees. Mm. Our governments, I mean, I'm not even going to speak solely about South Africa, uh, but our governments across the continent, do they have a hold on a proper hold on mining companies that are mining, you know, within their different uh, environments. Do they, do, they, do they actually have the right kind of control over everything that is happening in their own country? Or are these companies just having a free-for-all, doing as they please? This is the platform. Uh, this is why we have this platform uh, to ensure that there is consistency. We've got more than 53 ministers who are involved. We're going to have two heads of state um, uh, coming because we see in some instances there's an element of bullying where the companies uh, just walk in and do as they wish and and they threaten South Africa to say you have too much labor um, uh, labor laws which are stringent um, regulation is stringent and so on so we need to ensure that as the investors come there is easy way of investing but there is control to an extent that the citizen of that country the hosting communities must benefit is there willingness, though, from governments? Because some could say that, you know, ministers, these very 53 ministers that are going to be assembling and supposedly discussing all of these matters, some of them could potentially even have interests in some of these mining companies, which is why maybe they're not doing what they're supposed to, which is to be a little stricter. Could, could that be a possible, you know, uh, perspective that we, we, we're actually trying to get people to put laws and policies and regulations on the very companies that they themselves are benefiting from? It, it will be unfortunate if we have that situation because currently we're busy with the ministerial symposium. On Wednesday, we're going to have intergovernmental. We've got various government or, uh, countries presenting 
the what they what what is regarded as opportunities yeah. so any minister who comes in and play that role in mining and who was conflicted is not serving as a trustee once you are a public servant you are serving as a trustee on behalf of others not on your behalf oh. mr baleni as i say goodbye to you um what is as yourself expecting to, to, to come out of this? What are you hoping comes out of this? I mean, I know we're speaking about how there needs to be the upliftment and empowerment of communities, especially directly affected by these particular mining companies. But from an African point of view, what are we hoping the future of mining becomes? We need to ensure a commitment towards investment, uh, protecting uh, our environment, managing the just transition in such a manner that it is not imposed on, on our countries, but the material condition of each country must say, how do we manage this just transition?